Yo, what's up, Square Paper Gang? On this episode, we have Johnny Zolden, and we also uh, Andre uh, the Pimp comes in. The, the Andre the Lover. <laughs> Andre's back. Yeah, he's, he's back. Us. He comes in and uh, sat in with us, which was always dope. Uh, we talked about um, the difference between somebody defining what your responsibility to your work is and how uh, your mate may not understand that. We talked about uh, a new rule on the Patreon. We talked about that, about uh, yeah. having, you know, being up front and not assuming that there are certain things that we should just assume that adults would know. Yeah. Um, and we can those clarifications. Andre, uh, on the overall, the Patreon, uh, the bonus show, that's where we do all the bonus content over at Patreon. We do listener mail and stuff like that. And uh, you can join us there at patreon.com slash manschool202, which is great because it uh, it's a bonus show for you guys and bonus content. And it helps keep the light keep the light on over here and helps keep doing the show. And we do bonus shows like uh, we talked to Andre. He tells us a crazy dating story that is a, a must hear. And it's like a real-time lesson. All the lessons you're going to take from a crazy dating relationship and bad relationships and moving forward with them. And that's on the bonus episode over at patreon.com slash manschool202. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, y'all? It's GYBB Get Your Balls Back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. And I am really, really excited. Um, because this is a special show. Now, I know I've said that 500 times before, but this time, I really mean it. First and foremost, uh, Harry, how you doing? You ready to rock and roll? Doing good, man. Always ready to rock and roll. We got and, a full uh, house. The crew's back. Cool. And uh, the band's coming back together. There you Andre go. Andre G. Thompson in the yeah. building. What up, yo? Uh, a long her- herniate. this. living. <laughs> Good to see you, baby. Good good, to see you. Uh, They doing big things. Being a celebrity now, uh, he can't get a light though. So (laughs) those are very expensive. (laughs) And we got our guest in the building. Good, 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 good friend of mine. Somebody that I really like, but I don't, I don't, I don't see enough, and I don't hang out with enough. Um, give it up for Donnie Walden, uh, owner of the Stand Up yeah. New York. Yeah, uh, uh, my favorite club in the fucking city. Uh, give it up for Donnie, y'all. Give it up for Donnie, yeah, friend of the show. He's already informed us a lot of uh, what he's gonna say is gonna be a pleading the Fifth Amendment. <laughs> or, so, yeah. no, no comment. You're gonna have to. <laughs> No contest. Yeah, you'll, pro- you'll probably have like three minutes of audio from me. Okay, the end. and uh, Don, Don, he's acting like an insurrectionist. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's running into the capital oh of God, his marriage. I, I love that. You always laugh like that. Yeah, that, that was amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I want my laugh. It's cute, right? <laughs> it's cute, right? It's oh adorable. God. You do it again? Um, probably in a minute. <laughs> I want to like there tickle you. you. Yeah, it's kind of like Tom and Je- like it's like a Jerry. Fetish. It's like a weird <laughs> fetish thing we got going. Like Jerry. That, that, was, so, that was so adorable. Don't Thank that. you. Thank you. You know what? People always like that laugh while I'm punching them in the face. They're like, oh, it's adorable. <laughs> it's just very like sweet and authentic. Thank you, brother. That, that, that is how like, I feel. That should be the podcast intro. That's my I'm laugh, right? We, okay. we don't, we're working on it. Big things going. We got Andre back. So it's a uh, fucking giggle. <laughs> um, Donnie, what's going on, bro? It's good to see you. I was asking about you. How's the tennis coming? Uh, Donnie, uh, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, I could be doing it more. You know, I, I joined I joined a tennis club during COVID. Yeah. And yeah, I was playing like two, three times a week maybe at the peak. Uh-huh. But I don't know. I gotta I gotta work it more into my schedule. I, I would I would go once or twice a week, then I would skip like three weeks or a month, and then my wife yells at me, you know, cancel your membership. And that's yeah, like I, that's like I, the cycle. I, then I'll go again for a month and then I won't go for another month and got yelled at. 
I call I I kind of caught her yelling at you about it, and I was like, "How's the tennis?" And you was like, "Hey, that name I go." And then you were like, "I I, I went yesterday," and she was like, "Well, you should cancel your membership." Just shows you how women just love taking the joy out of everything. <laughs> no, no comment. No comment. <laughs> first one. First, no comment. That's the first. First official. Dre, can you keep a count on that? Can you take a tally? <laughs> I said that. <laughs> you keep a tally, Dre. Get a pad. Right. One. We got one. Treat it like boxing. Yeah. <laughs> Ding. Um, Dante, yeah, have, I, you, have you ever played tennis? Uh, a little bit. I'm not really good at it. I never really put in enough time. You know what it is too. I hate the. I hate the heat. I hate the mm. sun. And white um, people. That's what kept yeah. you away from tennis, son. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. I mean, because you you only exclusive to tennis. Uh, you be out in the sun. You in the. Te- am I lying? In I mean, Donnie. tennis is Football done outdoors. players play in the sun, and they got on all kinds. Of Who is? So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw you a little curveball now. What? I, I actually play indoors. Ah, oh, that ah, would. I can't say shit you know what? This is what happens when now you're like <laughs> air conditioning. Okay, excuse now. <laughs> this is this is the reason why uh, black people don't play tennis because we can't afford indoors. See. Mm. Uh, but uh, I, well, I, I think I just, white people only know. started playing indoors after black people started joining. They're like, we got to build, we got to have something with, <laughs> we got to have some type of. Well, they started with the fences, and then they're like, we, we got to put a roof on this. They know how to, they can climb apparently, so we got to keep them out. Hmm. Yeah, but Dre, even with football, like football is not really a summer sport. No, you know what I mean? Is, yeah, you could play it all year uh, cold in the cold. And if it's hot, man, I would. I just not play, so but I hate the sun. Um, but it's dope. Like, Dre, what's like, going? Uh, you like the beach or not? No, I don't like the beach. What the fuck, Why Dante? Why not? Nowhere to. I would rather a pool. I don't like sand. Uh, I, although I do like to surf. I I can surf. How? How the fuck that makes sense? Because well, he likes the water you, surfing in the water part. In you know, the like water, sit, sitting in the sun part, which I hate the sitting in the sand. You part. Like I like sitting in the, That's because Andre, fuck Andre and his abs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the, I don't like the beach either. Like I go, I go in the summer once or twice a week. Yeah, uh, you know, with the family. But I don't. Yeah, yeah. I don't like just like sitting there. So you know, that's yeah. a so thing do you do. Something. For I don't got to f- just sit there. It's not a requirement to stay still. Go you fucking have, when you have kids, some shit. I don't know. When you have Play kids, ball. Andre. When you have fucking kids. Fucking bring food. Go yeah, to the no. water. Yeah, no. Okay. When you have kids, you know, you yeah. got to watch them. You got to so, watch them gotta, so they don't die. Uh, yeah, watch right. the kids so the kids don't drown, Andre. Touche, Andre. And Touché. like yesterday, <laughs> yesterday it was like 100 degrees and I'm sitting like on the oh, beach. Oh, you was at the beach enough. yesterday. Yeah. What? You was at the beach yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, that's just it's not fun for me. So yeah. yeah, part of the part of having children it's is that you have to take them. You ha- the number one job is making sure they don't die, which kind of becomes what every trip or outing is about. Whether it's the beach, and the beach the is dangerous as fuck for kids. Beach is dangerous. And kids, but, let's be. Let's also remember, kids are stupid. Let's not forget, they don't. They're. I don't dumb. know if you. I don't know if you call them stupid, Harry. I, mean, I, ha- just, I am right now. I'm calling them they, stupid. All they're right, dumb. friend. This is the hill <laughs> Harry gonna die on. Dumb. <laughs> Fuck them I'm, dumbass I'm with, kids. I'm with, I'm with Harry. Harry. They do Thank a lot you. of stupid things. Yeah. They just went left to their own choices, their own decision making. They're hey, smart y'all just for kids. batting a thousand every day? Well, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I'm not dying. I can't tell you how many times you have to <laughs> I don't know if that's life. just because of your responsibility, Harry. I think other things have helped you not die. Mm. Mm. My smart decisions. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I was watching. I was I was at the club. I was at Stand Up New York, and I was asking Donnie about his his uh his uh tennis, and his wife jumped right in. She was like, "You don't even why don't you why does she not want you to have a membership, Donnie? Why is that a those were her exact words, actually. Yeah, it, 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 it sounded like her. That's actually bit, so. uh ancient Hebrew that Dante is doing. Is like <laughs> or Yiddish? It's like a form of Yiddish. <laughs> I, I think she, you know what she wants to. I guess she 
she likes to get the full value out of things. So if I'm paying for a gym membership or a tennis, you got to you got to go every day, twice you know, and twice gotta, on I, Tuesdays. I got to I got to use that. She doesn't like wasting money. Like we we joined like the beach club, you know, and she wants she wants to use it. Like you know, yeah, she feels that like sounds pretty good. good. That, yeah. That's really what it's coming from, which makes sense. Like does I, she I, I, does I she got, work? Like waste wasting. She, does she work now or no? Uh yeah, she's work. She's a orthodontist. Oh shit! So you could Super actually work. waste her money. That's awesome. <laughs> Probably <laughs> her money. <laughs> That's fucking. It's not, it's not comedy club money. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, it could be. It could be. It could be. Um, Dre, what's going on? It's good to have you back. Fans been asking about you. Good, bro. Living. They wanted to Fucking... talk to you and see what's going on. And everybody oh, keeps asking about you. We thought you. Yeah, absolutely. And Shout out to on... the peoples, man. Yeah. So welcome back. I um I did a live radio show yesterday, uh, which is so let me just say this up front. This show's gonna be a little bit different because Donnie's a Donnie's a good friend and he's a friend of the show. And um, being that uh, Donnie is gonna plead the fifth <laughs> through most Fields. of the show. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna, we gonna have a we're gonna have a, a free for all, just kind of a, what I would like to call an open discussion. So this way, uh, Donnie's wife can't go. Remember when you said, uh, "Now you gotta quit your membership." Oh, so this is and to keep him out of troubles. Yes. Yeah, we got to keep him out of trouble. I love Donnie. I love Donnie to death. Love his kids, too. I mean, not in a weird, creepy way, but I mean, I love his kids. I think it was good until you specified. Yeah, probably so. When I, when I said it, I was like, maybe I shouldn't say this. Those are but adorable they, kids. I mean, they're not like hot or nothing. They just... You know. <laughs> I used to take Johnny's kids and put them in the truck, get them in the truck and make them honk the horn when I had the horn and sit but them I, on the I, motor. I, 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 I've Dante has said four different names of mine this in ten minutes. One <laughs> is Donnie Waldman, yeah. my business partner. Well, no, I said Donnie Walden. Harry, uh, I got to side with uh, Donnie on this one. Really? <laughs> been, I, I, here's the thing. I, I, I didn't hear that, but I do know that you called him Johnny just uh, five seconds ago. <laughs> I did not call him Johnny. You did call him Johnny? Call me Johnny. No, I did. You did call him Johnny. That's did funny. I call you this Johnny? Funny. You call no, me Johnny. Have, yeah. Turned into All a right. drinking game. Yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little fatigued from last night. And the heat, the heat has really been um I, I think I got a little heat stroke. Like I I don't know how y'all feel, but I, I just it's it this beats is the disgusting. fuck out of me. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, this is disgusting. But it's good. Been running my... around with his fucking cum gutters. Yeah. Fuck you. It's all right. Not that bad. <laughs> Get a little water. You know what I'm saying? A little, yeah. little magnesium. Be all a whole right. lot. A whole lot of baby you know oil. I didn't think of water. Gallons of, Thanks for gallons the tip of baby oil. I didn't think of the water. Like you just don't drink water. Me, Harry, Never right here sucking down Coca Cola. I don't drink. A, I don't drink a lick of Coca Cola. <laughs> um, but I I did a thing last night, right? And uh. Uh, it was like a radio thing for uh, Sirius Radio, and a, Karen Hunter. they did a Karen Hunter's show. Um, I did a Foolishness Friday. We did the first live thing for Foolishness Friday, and they sold it out. And then they had an ass. They, they call it Foolishness Friday, which is so. I do Sirius Radio with her every. If y'all want to check it out, it's uh, uh, 126 on Sirius Radio. I'm the, I'm on there every Friday. I and, think they do um, it on the radio on Friday, but this was a live yeah. event version. Yeah, of we, the did radio it, we did it. We did it live. To why get, it was on you know, Sunday. Kind of meet the fans and stuff. And uh, I was asked by I, so they do a thing. They do a segment called Ask Dante, and this lady was saying how she she has a she's been married thirty years. It's a great marriage. I was like, mm. and then <laughs> and then she she said, you know, we have great sex and stuff. The problem my problem is. That uh, I uh, she goes, I can't suck his dick and make him come, which I thought was uh, problematic. I just in my mind, I was like, she's a god of what a beautiful woman, what a wonderful you know what I mean? lady, <laughs> what a what a wonderful old older lady, just trying to suck a her husband of thirty years dick to make him splash off in her mouth because <laughs> she's a good she's a good wife. 
Huh? Don't you know, when people ask what's a good wife, that's what they think of. Right, Donnie? <laughs> no comment. Ring no the comment. bell. We got two. We got two. Yeah. Got two. <laughs> what, 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 do you, what do you think about Dante just calling me uh, Jimmy? Jimmy. It'll be easier yeah, this way. Call him, no, you, you called call him Jimmy. Now I did not. I said Donnie. <laughs> He did call him Donnie. Oh, that's fine. Funny. This one, he just Dante, Dante's going to think Dante's going to like check his, now you're check just, himself in. Yeah, now you're just gaslighting him. Now it's being unfair. <laughs> yeah, now you're just scaring him psychologically where this, Dante this thinks AC, this AC is not coming yeah. out quick enough. <laughs> Dante thinks he's having heat stroke now. <laughs> I do think I'm like, did I? Anyway, um, so she, she asked me now and I uh, and this is like a live question. And uh, I go, well, I don't I haven't had a uh, I was like, first of all, can we should probably survey all the dick sucking holes in the room first. Probably they probably know more about this than I do. Uh, but nobody, <laughs> nobody volunteered. Uh, and so I related it to what I know about men going down on women, which I am an expert in uh, plenty of practice. And and one of the things that I like, if, uh, if you ever know a guy who thinks he's great at going down on a girl, right? He will always say, "Oh, my skills! I got skills!" Da, 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 da. But the, he the reality, about it like he's a rapper, yeah, like he was like, "Yo, you can't fuck with me, son. You ain't even seen me work. You ain't seen my work, son." And so, but the thing about that is one of the things that last I said, name I'm, eater, first name pussy. <laughs> when I say pussy, you say <laughs> so he goes, so uh and I've had guys attack me on the radio. Yo, you don't know my skills, blah blah. And I and Wait I think y'all having beef over eating pussy? This is a thing. He, he just called up and had a he just yo, he went at me, son. He he nah, came at me. Something wrong. <laughs> I felt like it was the quick and the dead, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> Like we were gonna have a a, a a fight at high noon. We we're gonna shoot out. I did two niggas arguing over who eat pussy. And I wasn't even going out. I just was talking about the technique. And he he calls me up. He said, "Father, catch your girl." You what? And I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" I mean, I'm imagining like you know them old kung fu movies with two <laughs> two like, huh, kung fu. So you think yeah, you're a pussy eater? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your style is no match for mine. <laughs> so, so what I was trying to explain was that nobody is a great pussy either. You have people that are experienced, but from from woman to woman, it's very different. The, the process is very different because every woman is like a beautiful snowflake. Every woman is very different in different ways. Um, <laughs> And uh, and so and and I went on to explain that you know some women like direct content contact. See, I can't. This is why I can't say Jimmy. Direct content. I can't you even say real YouTube words. YouTube videos every day for these bitches, bro. Otherwise, they're gonna leave you. Yeah, you gotta some some prefer direct contact. Some small circles. Some under the hood. Some over the hood. Person. Some. And those things happen. And then as the process goes along, right, Donnie, the the uh, the as the process moves on, the intensity can change because her body is at different heights of ecstasy or different forms uh, and levels of euphoria. And so I was trying to explain that. And and I would say that. Um, uh, so you can't you can have a knowledge of a lot of things. But in order to master your particular girlfriend or your particular wife, it's trial and error. You have to try different things. And then you have to kind of take a mental note on what she likes. Like, I have a system where, like, I'll do one thing and then I'll rate it from one to ten. And then I'll do something else and I'll rate it from one to ten. And then I'll have some things that are like nines and some things that are sevens and some things that are sixes. And then I remove the sixes and the sevens. And I try to and as i'm trying more i'm getting more eights and nines and then i just eliminate the sixes and sevens and i just go with the eights and nines but it sounds like, uh like like getting to a good comedy set 
Yes, it is exactly. And then, you know, it's funny you say that because there's all, you know, I always say that there's, you know, I haven't said this in a while, but I, the true wisdom is the understanding of underlying concepts, how they relate to situations that seem irrelevant, but really are not. That once you understand the, the, the truth, the cosmic and universal truth of anything, you can usually apply that same truth to other things. If somebody just came into this conversation, they would never yeah. guess that we I'm were talking, talking about, about Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> if they just came in and heard they, cosmic if, universal truth, they didn't get <laughs> shit prior. Yeah. If they'd be like, what y'all talking about, God? Andre, and then they, you know how on YouTube, you go, wait, I missed it. Let me skip. Web telescope pictures. <laughs> Let me skip back 10 seconds What to see what they were talking about. Oh, shit. And I'm going, so when you munch box, you know, <laughs> so, so it's funny because you say that's a great way to put a comedy set. You pick the stuff, you pick the stuff that kills and then you get rid of the stuff. If the stuff is not necessary, you take the punchlines that are less and you remove them. Do, and do, then you, you do you, uh, have a conversation with the girl after to collect her feedback, like a post game. <sighs> um, send her, send her like a, uh, like a survey by email. Like, what did you like this? What did you think of the? La, 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 la. Like, what do you like, think about that? Like one to five stars. <laughs> I, I. So here's the thing. I've been. Uh, let's just say I've been eating pussy for a long time, and I don't really uh, go for the survey because there is. Um, you should be paying attention so, the whole time, anyway. Yeah, you, if you're paying attention. Language. Say that again, Harry. You got to be paying the body lang paying attention to the body language the whole time while you're in the process anyway. So if you're paying attention to what's going on, you can tell when they're into something and when they're not. The body right, language. Right, ring will that tell bell you. again. <laughs> got a so, bell. so what's what's interesting? So, okay, so let me see how I can explain this. Why I wouldn't give a survey? Um. Well, well, I, did, I didn't mean I didn't mean like. Survey. I know, I know uh, what you mean. I mean, just having a conversation about. Yeah. It. yeah. Yeah, you, you don't do that. Well, here's I'm going to tell you why. Um, you I mean, you own a comedy club, so you get this. You ever see somebody do a joke, right? And you, don't, you don't tell them, you don't send them to like your Google page and ask them to leave a review. No, no, but right. But you also don't, you also, the best joke is the joke that where they say the punchline <laughs> And you get the punchline. Do you know what I mean? Like from when the when the joke is so well crafted, you know you 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 make the the joke so that it's it makes sense to them without explaining it. It's the audience is so much more elated about that because they feel as though that they have shared in the construction of the joke. Does that make sense? So um like uh, if we look at like Catrice O'Neill when he did uh, Elephant in the Room and he goes, um, he goes, oh, what was the, the what was the Spanish girl from South America that got? And everybody goes, no, he goes, eh, exactly. And so everybody understands what he means and he hasn't really said what he means. And so women will almost see it, it as uh, so let me back up. Uh, Two things that men are supposed to be good at. You, you lost two people, by the way. Yeah, no, I don't know. They, they're right just here. leaving. Oh, just, Harry's like, he, Harry's, he, I'm out he here. It's like five minutes ago. Oh, I, I, look, I can, I can do this on my own anyway. Harry, it's fine. Harry like went to the corner store. <laughs> <laughs> Harry went to get some hair gel. Yeah. From <laughs> so, so, um, the, um, now I forgot what I was saying. Oh yeah, so he it's uh, it. right, yeah, but it was something. Sp so um, if if it, if a woman is with a guy who or, who innately knows what she wants without her having to speak it, it is much more impactful than if he asks and and says, "Well, what do you like?" and then you just do what she likes. It's like if you give her a gift that super sentimental that you've thought out because based on and you've come up with the answer of what the perfect gift is without asking her what do you want right now i'm 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 absolutely um for uh communicating and when you don't understand something that, that to ask but if you can do it without asking then it's almost like a magic trick 
when you when you know what to do because they're always like oh my god how how did you know like how do you how do you know right when so, you're when you're when you're down there doing your yeah. thing for a while um and like a lot of time passes and you could you can tell when she's not enjoying it Are you yeah Ed, like, hmm, like, what's going on here? Well, I think, okay, so at the time when you when you recognize that she's not enjoying it, there's a lot that has happened before you get to that point. Like, it, uh, so you want it to constantly intensify, right? And if it's not intensifying, then you need to check that before it starts sip slipping away <laughs> you know it's like when you got when when you look at your tire you go i think i got a slow leak right you don't want to you don't want to get a flat tire and then go oh i gotta change it you know what i'm saying you want to you want to do something about it while you hear the air pissing out uh, like you want to let, let me go fix this before it becomes a problem so if you're at the point when you're down there and you can say she's not in there then you haven't been paying attention enough in the first place soon as there's a shift in energy or shift in in um uh, not a shift in energy but a, just a, a shift in excitement then you should be looking to uh change your technique and to make adjustments you don't want to wait till you you lost so that so you don't want to be down there and then she yawns and then you're like oh fuck it's that's some hard <laughs> crushing shit if that happened man. <laughs> and you gotta then, get dressed just, yeah, a, yeah. just a just a side note, like sometimes, so my wife, you know, Billy, she's an orthodontist. Uh, yeah. She sees like 40, 50 patients a day. Yeah. And she's on feet all day. And it's different, much different type of work than what I do. Yeah. Um, so like if, if, you know, when we're home at night and she asked me to do something and I'm like, oh, I'm tired. She's like, like, you don't work, you know? But like, I think I can point to like this conversation, like this is work, you know, like I did work, you know, four to five, like right. I was talking about this. You did you know, work. Talking about, I'm like, it does not, it's not like fixing braces, but you know, this is work, right? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I don't, I mean, you making a joke, but it's, you're not wrong. I mean, to run a business. And to, 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 to be in a situation where the business needs to be successful and you need to anticipate the things that need to be done in order to make a, even though you may not be physically whole and, you know, working on somebody's teeth, right? The stress that you're under for the fact that the, that this next thing may not work or the next, what's going on or whatever, is still stress. You're still under a level of stress. Where you at, Andre? I'm right here. They um Andre is really good with like the physicality of shit. And I was going to say, uh, Andre, what level of stress? I don't know if you can answer this, but you probably have an idea. How what level of stress, like regular mental stress? How does that affect your physicality? I mean, stress uh, can in interrupt your endocrine system, hormones, fuck with every hormone, adrenal, testosterone leptin ghrelin you eat different you, your sleep is fucked up cortisol is crazy so you wake up weird and all kind of shit so like stress stress is like what you could consider that the number one killer like you know because it comes in so many Andre. ways and look at me look at me i love you bro I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> see how they, that was just a switch off bam he came right in so my point being is that she's saying that there's not a physical aspect of, but the level of stress you're under on a on a minute to minute basis of running a business could do what endocrine. Blah, 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 blah. What did you say? Say what? Shoot, give me endocrine more of those disruptors words. and yeah, yeah, hormones there it is. and adrenals. <laughs> so it don't. But you, I think what you also have to do is you got to stop sharing uh, uh, what you do. Because then it gives her an opportunity to assess whether or not you're working or not. Do you know what I mean? Also, you didn't want to be an orthodontist. She wanted to be an orthodontist. So, so you're, you're saying you're advising me not to, not to not be truthful, but don't share something. Don't volunteer shit that's going to come back and bite you in the okay. ass later. Right. You know. Because she's because she's going to look at it. And, and, and I guess rightfully so. I mean, the, the, so 
one of the, one of the things that I say over and over again is is the importance of the, the, the importance of ace is authenticity, credibility, and empathy, right? And number one, telling the truth. So you should tell the truth when you open your mouth. It should be truthful. Um, credibility when you say you're going to do something, you do it, right? Um, and empathy is understanding that she. You, I mean, you do understand that she's on her feet all day working, and and but. The fact is that she doesn't have the empathy to understand the level of stress that you're under on a day to day basis, you know, and what it feels like to have a business and it be on based on your every move and the decision you make to for it to be successful and how taxing physically that could be on you. And so to say you don't work is it's just you, you know, it's like somebody, you know, looking at somebody who does stand up and be, oh, I could do that. No, the fuck you can't. Like, no, you can't. It, it's a whole different thing. And it, it's there's a whole different different muscles and different parts of the brain that, that you just can't do. And people, people, you know, we see that all the time, especially in the clubs, people hackle because they, oh, I'm funny. And then you're like, no, you you have no idea what the sacrifices and what it takes to make this, which is the same thing. I mean, if you think about the sacrifices that you've made to have this club, to even to own it. Like I remember when you were buying the club and all that you went through and buying the club and times when it was hot and time was ago. The stress of that is like, so for somebody to say you don't work, it's, you know, it's like, I mean, you know, I love your wife. She's, you know, and I'm one of her favorite comics. So, but, <laughs> but who the fuck are you to say that this is not work? You know, you also got to just make sure as an individual that you feel like you're doing everything you can on your end. So are you, you know, are you being lazy or are you doing everything you can on your end to whatever needs to get done? So if you have free time, are you sitting around playing video games, watching TV while she's dealing with the kids or are you actually working and then, you know, vice versa? Like, are you being realistic and reasonable? Like, are you doing everything to make the, the business successful? Yeah. Would you, I mean, in yeah. your opinion? Yeah, I, I, I put, it, it doesn't maybe, I'm very chill. So, like, yeah. no, I mean, I'm not judging it. I'm just asking. No, 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 I'm saying from, uh, when people look at me, I, I, I appear very chill. Right. Right. I don't, I don't get angry. I don't yell. You are right. currently wearing a backwards baseball hat, which is the chillest move <laughs> that a, a person could do. Like, it's funny. I met, I had a big meeting with like a big Jewish organization this morning and like I walked in oh. with like, your tennis, that, um, your tennis shirt. Where, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't care, which I love that. Like, I'm not getting dressed yeah. up for anybody. It's a very you know? casual, right. chill vibe. And that's like my mindset also. Like, I don't, I don't need to impress anyone. You know, I am right. who I am. And that's like, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not wearing pants for like any meeting. <laughs> um, so that's because yeah, right, Harry doesn't have any pants now, no. right now. He's doesn't appear, no. uh, I appear Never. chill, but yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about work and working like, yeah. Yeah. Like, like morning, day, night, like when I'm in the shower, when I'm on the toilet, when I'm on yeah. the floor, <laughs> right. uh, yeah, like too good. much where, it, it is unhealthy. Like it, it's very hard for me to disconnect from work. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and just sit on the beach or uh, even while I'm playing tennis, I'm thinking about work. Really? Um, even then when you're in, in an active uh, yeah, activity yeah. as for, you... for some reason, it's, it's difficult for me to uh, break from that. I'm, I want to learn, you know, I'd love to just, you know, watch a movie or, mm. uh, not thinking about work for like sometimes I forget about work and I'll think about it for 20 minutes and I'm like oh my god that was a vacation you know <laughs> Andre totally tell them cool. some more about the endocrine whatever <laughs> I, I, I do I do I do want to like learn how to just uh, unplug but also at the same time I do love being productive yeah uh, and I love um, you know I mean certain things I don't love about the club but there are certain things I, I do love um, yeah, I love. I love. You know, we're we're we got into the festival business. So you know, we're doing mm -hmm. a big festival in Coney Island next month. And right, right. I love, I love working on that show and partnering with different organizations and comics and musicians. And it's been like an amazing process. Um, you know, so that's sort of taking me out of the club day to day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's still it's still work. Like I've worked like. 
sometimes I work so much where I'm like, like, were we really, are we really on this earth to like work so hard? Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it doesn't make sense. Sometimes I'm like, I just want to live on a kibbutz, you know, in Israel. Yeah. I'm just like worry about. I like, want to live on a kibbutz as well in what's Israel. What's the kibbutz? Uh, I don't know, but it sounds wonderful. A, a kibbutz <laughs> is like Harry. You know what that is, right? I do, but I, I you'd probably be better at explaining it. It's a, like a, uh, a kibbutz, it's like a it's pilgrimage like, thing. Um, for it's like Jews. Like, they have it like in Israel, but yeah. um, you're sort of just like living outdoors a, a little bit sorry. in like a community. community like, yeah, it's like a communal it's like communal living so mm -hmm. like if you're all you're all having dinner together like 30 families and like uh -huh. you're, all, you're all making something for the dinner you know i think the point is just to it's like living off, on a farm almost like the burden off of everyone everyone like helps each everybody other everybody takes a little bit of yeah and it's not like you know everyone has like simple jobs um and it's like a very nice simple way of life you know it could be it's not bad but it's yeah. also there. It's all for the community, and the idea is not about profit or making, you know, uh, sort of like so, like moves. socialism. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just like a much more simple way of life, very like family focused and yeah, um, community focused. Uh, is, is that a big thing in like? Is that or is that like what percentage of Jews would be involved in say kibbutzing? <laughs> I think it's more like an Israeli thing. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's a small, small percentage. Small I mean, percentage. I wouldn't want, I don't, I don't know. I would, you I can would try that for a little, a little they bit. Have I, pilgrimages and things like, where you can go I, and, you know, like usually teenagers and stuff can spend the summer living in a kibbutz. Oh, yeah. so like almost like a retreat, like a, yeah. 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 You, can, you can do it for a short period of time. It's just like a different way of living. Um, I, I do feel like, us humans these days, most of us put ourselves under uh, an enormous amount of like stress and pressure yeah. to, especially entertainers, uh, you know, like yeah. we're all killing and, and we're killing ourselves where, I don't know, is there like a middle ground? Well, I mean, I think, um, you know, I was talking to Andre, we, we were talking earlier today and what we were talking about is that, um, you know, like you know having relationships and so like one of the things about doing comedy is comedy is your wife and your wife is your side bitch <laughs> that's your side chick and you, you, you I, it's very difficult for uh women to understand who are not in the business and sometimes even if they are in the business to understand um how important this expression, this artistic expression, and we, because they don't have that. Like a lot of people go to work, they go to work and they hate their job, or it is a job where they go there to make money to, to do things like go hang out on the beach. You know what I mean? And whereas what we do is we love doing it. Like, the, you know, the excitement of getting up on stage and kind of riding that, you know, riding that hurricane every like i mean if you think i mean it's really insane you know it's kind of like it's kind of like when you know we're talking about surfing it's like every show you're riding a new wave and it's always ever changing and just the minute you feel like you the minute like you feel like you got comedy figured out then lady it's comedy changed. kicks you in the dick you know <laughs> kicks you right in the dick and lets you know oh you don't you don't get it this at all um, and I think that's what 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 keeps us interesting because there's never on, there's never not another level, you know. There's always further, and you can stay at one or you can move forward, but there's always this kind of upward mobility about what and it's you can very do. And I'm, and I'm purpose driven, also. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you you like you wanna it 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 helps you and your yeah. being. Uh, yeah, and you're also helping other people. Yeah. Where, like, once you experience that, being a comic, for example, uh, like, you can never go back to, like, a nine-to-five yeah. job. And yeah. But I've seen insane. guys I've seen guys quit and go, this is just not for me, that they can't, they don't have the ability to kind of sit in the place where they literally know that they can lose every minute. So a lot mm -hmm. of times when you see comics that we would consider hacky, 
a comics who keep it safe because they don't want to lose. They don't have that. They're not willing to risk losing. And so, you know, I think it's an it's an interesting thing to, you know, and like I, I said in the beginning, is it's relationships are two things men are supposed to be good at even when you have no practice, which is really unfair. Relationships and sex, we don't nearly get enough practice. We don't get enough to, opportunities to make mistakes. The mistakes are, you know, the mistakes have consequences and they're painful emotional consequences. And so, you know, but we're still expected to be good at it. Um, and you, you got guys who have, you know, you got guys who are 70 years old that are shitty, still sh shitty at relationships and stuff and been married and stuff. And they, and they, you know, don't even have a, you know, a, they don't even have a blueprint to follow. And, uh, and the, the stress of that, the expectation of, um, expecting somebody, the expectation of somebody being good at something that they've never had any practice in, do you know what I mean? Like, how long have you been married now? 16, over 16 years. And and how, how old are you? 41. 41. And how many, I don't know if you can answer this, but how many relationships were you in prior to you being married? Uh, not, I mean, not a lot, maybe three, four. So, like, if you, say if you wanted to I play a when I was 22. Okay. Okay. So even if, if you talk about, you say you want to be an Olympic ping pong player, right? And I said, well, you know, look, you played ping pong three times. Uh, why don't you go for it? it? The absurdness of thinking that you could be an Olympic or even, a, I mean, you play tennis, which is even better to think that you could be good at tennis by playing it three times. It's, you would never even think that that's a, a reasonable yeah. expectation, you know? But you've been in three relationships in your life, then you're married, and you're literally in this thing trying to figure it out while you're in it. And the consequence of not figuring it out is divorce and pain, emotional pain and stuff, which is really, I mean, if we think about how inconsiderate is that, you know what I mean? Like, how unrealistic is it for you to be great at this with no practice at all, you know? So it's a just an odd thing because of the fact that how we define manhood is something that this is just what you're supposed to know. But how do you know? I mean, half of us don't even have a parent that taught us. You know, you don't have a father that taught you. Even if you have a father, a lot of times he was so busy covering it all, you know, Honestly, get down. <laughs> get down. <laughs> Your mother's, you know, like... <laughs> that they didn't even have a, they were like, dad, teach me about girls. And he was like, I'm trying to figure it out myself. Get behind the couch. She's on a rampage yep. again, you know? And so it's, it's an interesting, it's interesting conceptually to, 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 to have those expectations and to have those expectations. And then you're 40. So now you're supposed to have it all figured out because you're 40 years old when you haven't really had that much experience in the first place. It's just, you know, it's 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 insane. And then there's things that make us feel good. There's things that don't make us feel good. And then we ignore because we don't want to fuck it up. And we, you know, I mean, you know, it's just it's interesting. I mean, I, I always look at like, you know, you being an entrepreneur, having that kind of entrepreneurial spirit and having to, to kind of um, figure these things out, e even though you don't you know, you're not like I, so I work for the phone company for tw I'm coming up on 28 years for 28 years. I got up at six o'clock in the morning and went and did a job and somebody told me what to do. And I'm, I'm as able to make good money doing it, but I, there was no, you know, you know, there was very little room for creativity. Like here's your job, go fix it. I mean, I, I did the aspect of it where I had to find troubles where you had to locate trouble. So it was a little more, a little more involved. Um, did you, and I mean, that, that actually seems like when you when you had to repair something that that yeah that's that did you look at that as like a challenge? Yes, yeah, I did. I did. I can see like myself if I did that. Like it seems like it would be fun to figure out like what a problem is and fix it. Yeah, and then but but you or, know or was it was it like that for you or like? Yeah, it was. It was a it was a period of time where I was very immersed into it. I was really good at it, and then there was 
new technology, different machines and stuff that I that I could learn and new things that I could learn and different. So I, I let me see if I could explain this really quick. Like when your phone goes out, so, so this is an, an analogy. When your phone goes out, what happens either either the it's either wet, it's either the, the two eyes have either gotten wet or the two eyes are touching or, or they're touching one or the other or both. So there's only three things that it could be. Something cracked and the water got in it. Um, something hit it and it touched one, one side, you know, the negative side to the, and you can read it as a short circuit. And so the way you, the way you would um, find those troubles is, on a on a meet you you look at a meter and the, each one of those troubles looks a little bit different the way the meter responds and so with time you learn what you're looking at this means that that means same thing like comedy if you walk on stage and the and the and the uh, the, the crowd is is not responding. A lot of times, it'll, there's a lot of reasons why it could not be responding. It could be because the host is not great. I didn't really set up the room. It could be that the room, the AC is not working and people are too hot. It could be mm-hmm. because it took too long to clear the room. Um, that it, Because it took too long to clear the show before and the people have been waiting and they're tired because they've been waiting. So they're cranky. And so there's a number of different reasons. But there's also a number of a finite amount of things that you can do to change them. And one of those things is you, you kind of got to shock them into resetting. And if you don't shock them into resetting, then you set goes to shit. And being able to learn those things, those, you know, how you can kind of drop a hand grenade, you know, a comedic hand grenade, blow up the room and then start from fresh and start building is something that you learn with time. But how many times do you have to do that in order to understand specifically what is going to fix the thing. So it's a, it's a, it's a constant psychological problem that we're dealing with when we're on stage and everything. And so is relationships. So is fixing wires. It's all, but you have to have knowledge of what it looks like being able to read the room in order to change the situation. So even if you're in a situation where you, you know, um, you know, that like, you know, like your wife going, look, are you, if you're not playing tennis then give up the, then give up the, uh, um, you know, give up the membership. membership. One, one of the things is um, she's seeing uh, this is a waste of time, but she also sees it as a waste of time, even when you're doing it. <laughs> like she doesn't see a value in it in the first place. This no, is why no, she's. I, I disagree. She sees, okay. she, she, yeah, she sees the value in it. But canceling the membership also removes the ability the the ability to go do it you got to have the membership to do it don't you yeah i mean I'm just so if we if cancel if there's a better way to say it than you know cancel yeah them. but it's, it's not and I'm, I'm you're not saying it i'm saying it what i'm saying is uh, look um I, i'm trying to think of how i could put it um without being eh, fuck it it's like some <laughs> like a chick like you know a woman wants to get her nails done, right? And it's important to her. Do we really give a fuck if you know? I mean, as long as you don't got man hands, you know what I'm saying? We we we're, we're fine with it. But we don't we don't care. Maybe doing that is relaxing. Maybe it's an opportunity. I mean, it could be any number. I know dudes who who love shining their car. They love getting the wax out shine and it's a relaxing kind of therapeutic thing but if you don't see the value in it it's easy to say yeah yeah, you don't need to do that so i, I think what i'm what i'm saying is and you don't have to you don't even have to give me a fifth uh, give plead the fifth on this yeah, God, the but fifth on this one. You, but the point is being so ready to get you to remove your 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 membership innately says that she doesn't see the value in it because if she saw the value in it, the the thing would be to keep the membership and then encourage you to go to the to go to the you know to 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 do it. So keep the membership and say, babe, you, you didn't play tennis this week. I know you love playing tennis. You should go out and play tennis. You know what? Why don't you go? You know what I mean? You see how that that, that would be that would communicate something different 
it would communicate that, hey, number one, I, I understand that this is important, um, not just because it's important. I mean, and it could be just important to you, but it's also important because um, I recognize why it's important. And, and if she doesn't think it's important, she could also ask, why? I mean, why do you get this membership and then you don't go? She could ask that. And then you could have dialogue about, well, it's like I'm, I'm a lot of times I'm overwhelmed with my job. I'm overwhelmed with the stress of the job. I really want to do it. And I want and, and I want the ability to do so. If I end the membership, then even when I do find time to do it, I'm not going to be able to do it because I don't have a membership or you got to pay forty five dollars a clip or what. You know what I'm saying? To, to, to do that. Like I haven't I, I kept my membership, my gym membership. I haven't been in the gym for six months. I'm going back. I, first time I went back was today. Um, but if I didn't have the membership, I'd have to pay thirty dollars to work. You know, like to go to Equinox. I got to. So, but if I have the membership, even if I'm wasting the money, I'm not wasting as much as if I do it once in a while. And having the option also gives me the ability to go when I want. So, innately, you, I mean, you can't not. There's no other way to look at it. And I'm not asking you to call, you know, to to co-sign. But the fact that she's like, drop the membership, drop the membership every time you don't go every single day says that she doesn't think it's important. Um, but the same thing happens in comedy. And Harry, I know you've experienced this too, like where, you know, you, you I got to do a show and somebody goes, yeah. well, why can't you? Why don't you don't want to stay with me? You don't want to. Right. And it becomes <laughs> difficult, but you have to set those boundaries. Because and this, if you is, don't this is what the, the expectation is. Then the expectation, if you got this is important to me. Yeah. Well, if it's important to you, then when you don't go, well, you don't like it, it's I've, I mean, I'm, I'm, I was talking to Chris Stefano about this once. And he mm. this is when he first he first had his baby and he was talking about, yeah, you know, I got to get home. I, I can't I can't, you know what? And he was like rushing home. And I was like, oh, how, how long has your wife been doing comedy? He goes, oh, she, she's not a comic. Never. I go, yeah, but um, was she, was she manage comics? No. <laughs> I go, so I don't understand how she could dictate to you what you need to do as being a comic. Like, they don't understand that us hanging out, us being part in places is part of the creates job. opportunities. Um, and a lot of times we don't want to be in the place. We'd rather go home and sleep. I'd rather but go you home. Need to, uh, you got to show up. You got to show up. You got to be part of the community because things happen in the community. But to the same token, my first wife was, you know, she was going for her master's degree and I would never tell her, oh, you're studying too much. You, 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 you put <laughs> too much. Dumb, funny, bro. Did you read it? <laughs> you, you, I, I, so all you do is read. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm studying for my master's. Well, yeah, but you've done enough Master of that. to this dick. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's My interesting master. that somebody who <laughs> has no idea, you know, for lack of a better example, for has no idea what it is to be entrepreneurial, to think that you understand all of the things, the parameters of that, and then think that from the sideline you can dictate what I need to, and I don't get me wrong, what Harry said is absolutely right. It's you have to be in a situation where you're being honest of whether or not, like, are you really, are you really doing what you need to do? Mm. And if you're not doing what you need to do, you should feel uncomfortable when somebody checks you. But if you're really doing what you need to do and, yeah. and, and it's like, who is to say other than, I mean, I can and see if another successful entrepreneur said hey man you, you you you're doing too much you need to but i you know i would never ask and in, in lack of a better you know set of examples i would never ask an orthodontist um you know what do you think i should do with my comedy i mean i ask him about my teeth but i'm not gonna ask him about and and i think the 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 when people, especially when we are in relationships, people feel as though the relationship gives them, it gives them license to do that. You know, gives them license to kind of step in and say, um, you know, what is and what isn't. Um, 
Dre, we got five minutes, but we I want to get into this, Dre, too, because Dre was calling me and he was telling me, Dre, you mind talking about this crazy bitch or no? Uh, hmm. who's the crazy bitch? Which the one we were talking uh, about? The one, the one that you ghosted you? Oh, 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 um, no, this wasn't even a ghosted. This was a uh, we were talking, everything was fine, and then right. Legi- I, so I guess it might be ghosted because I thought ghosted was yeah, like, it's ghosted. And in the end, it's ghosted. The very I, last yeah. shit. Yeah. But I have no idea what happened. It was cool. No, <laughs> from what I noticed, nothing went wrong. That was a funny thing I said. It went wrong, but. Nothing went wrong, and then I don't know. I just went back to her page, and I was black. Can you tell? Can Damn. you tell us how it, what it led up? To? Oh, can- uh, what we went out. Everything was cool. She she got, I guess she drank till she got sick. <laughs> wait, oh, you said first. She, wait, Harry, <laughs> can we close this and do the? You want to <laughs> You want to do this on the Patreon? Yeah, let's do this on the Patreon. Um, for, Donnie, you want to? Plug the club real quick, and we're gonna do the rest behind the paywall, if that's okay. Yeah, uh, you know, stand stand up New York, seventy eighth and Broadway. My favorite uh, club, by Broadway. far, Johnny. My favorite club. Every I love night, so I love come it. on by, ask for me. Uh, yeah, Donnie Zoldan, not Donnie Waldman, not Jimmy. Donnie, <laughs> Donnie. You were come mixing up hello. Gabe's last name. That's what you were doing, Dante. Yeah. 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 Okay. My bad. You yeah. think all um, Jews look alike, and that's not right. I think it's, it's not right. Absolutely personally. not. Uh, Harry Gabe is not way right. more handsome than Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> but from, uh, uh, yeah, he, and much um, more confident, yeah. right? Yeah, yes, exactly. Much more. Gabe has too much confidence. It, it's just too much. It's crazy. It, Gabe has so much confidence, it goes back around to being un- in, not confident. Dre, talk to me. Yo, just uh, Andre D. Thompson on everything, Slouch Theory. That's it. All right, Harry, talk to me. Uh, all my stuff is uh, at Harry Trajanian. Uh, me, y'all can Google me. You know how to get me. Uh, or look at my uh, my virtual background. <laughs> and uh, uh, don't forget the one-on-one consultations if you need that. You know how to get me. Um, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. Yo, I love y'all, man. We're going to go back to the Patreon. Don't forget to sign up for the Patreon, and then uh, you can hear the rest of this on the Patreon. Uh, Peace. We're out of here.